Okay, so in the last video, we'd looked at our long-term trend and we'd seen what we noticed in there. And when we looked at our average seasonal effect and we'd seen what we'd noticed there and we'd looked at a bit about our residuals to see what we noticed about when our model didn't work. The whole point of time series is that you are making a forecast for the future. So I need to be able to make a prediction. So I'm going to click on enter graph that I want to make a forecast graph. Okay. So much the same as we did in the last graph. The black line on here is my raw data, the actual data I've plotted. The green line is my prediction historically for that data. So it's looking at the long term trend and the seasonal effect and it's plotting those on top of each other. My data finishes at March 2011, so that's the end. And then from then on, I get this red line. The red line is my actual prediction. The pink bit, either side of the red line, is my, I'm going to be fairly confident in between these two variables, these two values. So it's kind of like a prediction but it giving you a range of values because we know this isn't very good. It's actually not a bad graph looking at all the way across, but we know that there's going to be variations as time goes on. Now, NZ graph will only predict for the next two years, which is why it stops in March 2013. And I know as the further I get from my last data point, my prediction window this range of values of which my prediction is between is going to get wider because I don't know what's happening and anything could happen in that range. So I expect that. Okay. However, I also want my range of values to be the smallest it possibly can be. So if you look at my graph, I'm fairly certain looking at my graph that I'm pretty good in the middle of each year, but my range of values is quite big in summer and in winter. Okay, and I kind of expected that. Last thing you simply must do is you must have an actual table of output for your forecast. So there's my table of values. And in your report, you must pick one point or a couple of points and say in February of 2012, I predict the area of sea ice to be some be 1,435 million kilometers squared of sea ice. Because of variation in my data, I expect my area of sea ice to be somewhere between 3.589 million kilometers squared and zero kilometers squared. I cannot get a negative amount of sea ice. So therefore, I'm going to have to stop it at zero. I'm going to have to use my sense and go, it can't go negative. Okay? So those are the things you simply must do. And that is all the graphs we need for time series. Now, at this point, if we are trying to get you to show insight, insight into your data, you might choose to draw a graph of combining different variables. You might choose to draw a graph of other things. You need to have a look at how to use the program because it's all available in both NZ Graph and in Insight Lite for you to actually do that. You don't need to use anything else. But if you want to use something like Google Sheets or Excel, you could help yourself with that. Okay? There is no compulsion of you drawing any extra graphs or doing any extra work from where you are now as long as you show insight in what you've done so far. But if you found some other research or if you did something else that showed insight or you want to do an extra graph, you could. But that's all you have to do. Okay, so that is time series in a nutshell. Till next time.